off at like five past four. It wasn't pleasant, but we're gonna get up. Up or up? We're gonna get out now and have a look on deck and see what the scenery is like. We've got the camera on in the room and it looks grey and it looks wet. <laughs> So I wasn't sure whether to bring my jacket or not because in the room it was really warm. <laughs> totally should have brought it because it's absolutely freezing outside and it's really, really wet. And um, there's quite a few people up though. But yeah, at the moment it's just very misty. Which is scenic, but not so nice when it's really wet. So we've come back inside for now because it was so wet. But the view is still beautiful from in here. We're passing the fjords, it's lovely. But we also, th also thought that while the ship is quiet, we would just show you some of the key points without loads of people and just share a few little tips along the way. Vistas, which is situated in the atrium, is where you're gonna find your Costa coffees and hot drinks such as that. The 710 Club is situated in the atrium as well, just off the atrium, and this is where you'll find live music every night. I think it's on about three times a night. It's a really cosy, intimate setting. You can't book this though until you're actually on the ship. So if you're interested in this, I would get onto your app or go to the booking place on the ship as soon as you get on to secure a slot. But if you don't get a slot, they do hold back about 10 seats every night. So if you get there about half an hour before the show, there's a chance that you might be able to get in. The Limelight Club is where you can go if you want to see a show and have a meal at the same time. You have to pay a little bit extra for that, it's about £30 per person. But they have some really good acts on there. Some people that you might have heard of, such as Gareth Gates. Definitely worth checking that out and you can book that on your app two weeks before you come on the ship. Iona also has a spa and health club. It's located on deck six, so if you fancy a little bit of pamper and relaxation, this is the place to come. On deck 18, you'll find the adults only pool. It's called the Beachcomber, and it's a nice little oasis of peace and quiet. Although on a day like this, you're probably not gonna want to lie there. On deck 16, next to the beach corner, you will also find the retreat, which is a kind of cordoned off section that you have to pay to use. You can pay per day, I think. And it's just a wee bit more luxurious. I think it's got really comfortable sun loungers. It's got an indoor um, place where you can just chill out. And it's got some whirlpools as well there. We're not gonna be using that on this cruise, but it's, it's a nice little feature if you really want some peace and quiet and that's adults only as well. So the Sky Dome is pool by day, entertainment venue by night. So this is where you'll be able to see live music and also some acrobatic shows, that kind of thing. It's a cool space. We found the perfect place to watch the fjords as we sail by. We're just next to Taste 360 up in the Sky Dome. We found these lovely chairs where you can lie back. We've got a cup of tea from the Horizon Buffet and it's beautiful. We got off the ship at Olden and surprise, surprise, it's still raining. Literally every port we've got off at has been like this. It's a shame because I can imagine this would be stunning if the sun was out. Look, it is still stunning. It's just not particularly nice to kind of have to walk in the rain. So it's a shame. Now, there's a few different things you can do when you come to this port. Some of them, obviously, you can book through P&O. Other ones you can book yourself. So the main highlight of this port, I believe, is the glacier, the Brixdale Glacier. So there's two ways of going there. You can either book direct with P&O, they'll pick you up when you get off the bus, uh, the boat, sorry, and take you on a bus to the glacier, and then you hike up to the glacier. That's quite expensive. If you do it on your own, it's a hell of a lot cheaper, and that's what we were maybe gonna do, but because the weather's so rubbish, we're not gonna bother. But if we were gonna do that, and if you're interested in doing that, what you need to do is get off the ship, and catch the local bus that takes you to the glacier. Then you just walk it up at yourself, come back down and catch the local bus back. We're gonna take a video footage of the bus stop so you can see exactly where you need to go. 
So that's one of the things you can do here. The other thing is the sky lift, which goes really high. It looks really dramatic, really beautiful, but again, because the weather is like this, I really think it's quite pointless. You're not going to see a lot from the top. It's going to be really overcast and cloudy. So that, in my opinion, is a reason not to book that ahead of time. Because if you do and you get here and the weather's like this, I feel like you maybe have wasted a bit of money, to be honest. So I would just wait until you get here. Again, you can book that through P&O or you can also make your own way to the Skylift. I think there is a local bus that will take you there. Again, much cheaper than doing it through P&O, but whatever floats your boat. Instead of hiking to the glacier today, we decided to hike to a viewpoint that I'd read about. It's meant to be really nice, not many people there. So that's what we decided to do, but the rain is really heavy. We've only got one umbrella. I would be up for continuing the walk, but Ewan wants to go back to the ship. So we're at a bit of a stalemate. So we've decided to, f to toss well, not toss a coin because we haven't got a coin. <laughs> We've decided to toss our P&O uh, cruise card to decide whether we continue on this walk or not. So if it lands face up with Ewan's name, we go back to the ship. If it lands that way, we keep going. So <laughs> you get, you let's, see. let's see. Let's see. Uh, I'm just going to throw it up in the air. Oh my god. <laughs> oh well, let's hope it's worth it for the views. So I think this walk is about 8 kilometers round trip. People say it takes about 3 hours, but I'm hoping we'll be able to do it a bit quicker than that. And yeah, it's just a nice alternative if you don't fancy going to the glacier with the hordes of people. And I think the views from the top are meant to be really nice. So when you come off the ship, we're just basically using Google Maps. Uh, to get the route so when we came off the ship we just turned left followed the main road and then after a while you just branch up to the right so that's probably the best way to find where you're going if your phone can get onto 3G when you get here or 4G then yeah that's the easiest way so we've got 2.2 kilometers to get to the viewpoint but I noticed that there's a sign pointing towards Olden going the other way from where we've come. So there's obviously another route. So we'll go that way on the way back so that we can show you that one as well. Another really cool thing that you can do when you're here that we really wanted to do, but because of the weather again, we didn't do it. But it's called Via Ferrata. Don't know if you've ever heard of this. I never had before. But they have these in different kind of countries throughout the world and there are like climbs that you can do but you're kind of like attached and you climb up kind of like rock kind of faces and stuff but you've got like rivets to put your feet but you are attached by like some kind of cable type thing i'm not really explaining this very well but it looks cool and the one here you do it up near the chairlift the not the chairlift the the sky lift you do it up near there and there's like tight rope thing that you can do where you walk right out over like the mountains on this like metal tight rope. Again, like you're obviously, you're secure. Uh, but it looked really, really cool and I really wanted to do it. It is something that P&O offers an excursion as well. But if you book it yourself again, you're going to save quite a bit of money. But yeah, I think if we ever came back, I'd really like to do that. You can also do it in Olesund as well, but it's a much smaller scale, the one there, and much cheaper. But again, we weren't able to do it because of the weather. But if you're coming and you like kind of adrenaline and something that's going to challenge you physically, then definitely look up the Via Ferrata. When we first got up here, we had a great view, but now the mist is rolling in and we can hardly see a thing. It's really cool. I think we left at just the right time because we didn't really pass many people at all on the way and I can see more people coming up the hill now but I think this is a beautiful viewpoint and you get such a great view of Iona from up here so yeah I definitely recommend this walk it's been well worth it. So we're walking back to Olden the other way now so uh, hopefully this brings us out a little bit closer to the ship. 
So coming back this way, you get a much better view of Iona. It's stunning. It's, yeah, it's amazing. She is one beauty of a ship. The other thing that makes this different from Scotland is the colour of the water. It's so green, it's really mesmerising. So we managed to get into the 710 Club. We didn't have a booking but we arrived half an hour beforehand and we got in and we're really glad we did because it's a lovely, really intimate venue. It's got a nice drinks list, um, although it doesn't have What's the kind Malbec. of wine? Malbec. Malbec or Merlot. Which Donald is very upset about. I'm crying, I'm crying. <laughs> well, that was a very entertaining 45 minutes. They were a very, very talented band. I did get the feeling that maybe the rock night maybe wasn't their favourite night, um, but they were great I, and I, I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed it. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. I'm just a Ford band, but I'll tell you, everyone in was talented. And I would go back and cheer them again. Really enjoyed it. Four incredible musicians. Uh, so if, if, if you can, come and see them. Um, even if you haven't booked it, there's 10 seats set aside, so you definitely get a seat if you turn up early enough. We're in the Opal for the first time, and it's very green, which makes sense, because it's the Opal. Looking forward to this meal. So we've all had chicken noodle soup to start with. It was nice. It wasn't mind-blowing, but it was tasty enough. I've got the gluten-free vegetarian tacos, and they look good. Pork, uh, potatoes, carrots, and mushrooms, and it's really nice. I really enjoyed my main, and I'm now having a treacle tart for dessert, which is very nice. And Ewan is having a savoury dessert. He's having a cheese plate with gluten-free crackers. Paracotta, what do you call it? Paracotta, yeah. And it's really nice, it's tasty. There's not much on the plate, but just nice. I just enjoy it. One thing we didn't do today, which I'd read about, was when we left Alden to go out on deck and have a look because apparently the locals give a very unique send-off when you leave this port but to be honest it was so wet I'm not even sure the locals would have been out but if they were we weren't about to be standing out there getting soaked so we didn't get to see that so sorry that we weren't able to share that with you but if you're on this cruise and you're departing Alden then definitely keep a look out for that because it's meant to be a really spectacular kind of send-off sounds really nice so we've come to the end of day five of the cruise. So far, so good. In the next video, we're going to be reviewing the Olive Grove. We're going to be reviewing the Limelight Club. We're going to be telling you about what we get up to in our final port, Haugesund, where we're hoping that we get to do a rib boat. And we'll also be sharing with you our last day at sea and also disembarkation from the, the ship, what that all entails. So we hope that you found this video useful. If you've got any questions at all, please pop them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. But yeah, hope to see you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.